I'm Dr. Paul Pierce. Welcome back to The Plastic Life. And today, I hope you're ready to learn something. So your hair is thinning out. Well, what's the first thing you need to know? The first thing you need to know is that you are not alone in this journey. And I say journey because this is something that's going to be affecting you for the rest of your life. Unfortunately, there is no cure for hair loss and it's something that progresses as you get older. There's no form of shampoo, magic pill, magic injection that can just make it go completely away and help you keep all of your hair for the rest of your life just by doing one single thing one time. The other aspect of this that you need to know is that there are a large number of men that are gonna be joining you or have already started their journey on their hair loss. About 67% of men by the age of 35 will experience some form of hair loss. Whereas guys who make it to the age of 50, I don't know why I said make it to the age of 50. Not dead. Whereas men age 50 and older, about 85% of us are going to have some form of hair loss. Now, I have hair loss that runs in my family and I'm waiting for the microphone to drop on my hairline. This is not a hair transplanted hairline. I get that asked all the time during my consults. Excuse me, I have to ask, is, is that your real hair? So what's the first step you should do in doing something about your thinning hair? Well, the first thing to do is actually to do something. Don't wait. Do the longer you wait, the harder it will be to reclaim whatever you've lost and make it more invasive and more extensive on the amount of things that you need to do to get back to the goal that you would like to see. So the sooner that you start acting on your hair loss, the longer you'll be able to keep the hair that you have and enjoy that hair for as long as you care about having your hair. Remember, hair loss is a journey. You're going to be losing this for the rest of your life. The other reason you wanna do something as soon as possible is because the rate at which you're going to lose your hair is completely unpredictable. Now, your dad or your uncle may have started losing their hair in their 20s and maybe have lost it over you know, a period of 20 to 30 years. However, the gene for hair loss is variable. So some people may start losing it in their 20s. Other people, unfortunately, may start losing in their teens. However, you may be one of those lucky few that maybe you're gonna lose it further down the road in life. The minute that you notice that it's thinning out, the sooner that you do something, the longer that you get to slow down that process of hair loss in order to help keep your hair for as long as you want to have it. For example, some people may be hypersensitive to dihydrotestosterone, which is the hormone that's causing your hair to thin out and eventually not be noticeable anymore. Now, some people may not be so sensitive and they lose their hair over 20 years. Other people may be hypersensitive and they may start their hair loss at age 20 and by age 23 are completely bald. Another thing to do is to stay off of Google looking for these magic cures or these one-time treatment cures that people use to prey on your fear of you losing your hair in order for them to make a quick buck. And by the time you've used this product and you finally determine that this thing isn't doing anything, you've wasted your time, you've wasted your money, and you could have been doing something that actually treats your hair loss or at least helps slow it down through proven medications or topical treatments that we have in our arsenal to help slow down hair loss. Another thing not to expect after starting these medications is to have a full head of hair a week later. And any product that you buy that really states that, hey, these people got all their hair back in a couple of weeks, mm, not, not legit. It takes time. Probably full effect of taking these medications is about a year. And then from there, it's just maintaining what you got back. So stay off of shopping for those miracle cures. If you can get it over the counter, typically it's not going to be a great item to use to help slow down your hair loss. So now that you've decided to do something about your hair loss, it's time to find a professional who specializes in hair loss. Hair loss is understood by many doctors, your primary care doctor, your dermatologist. However, you wanna go see someone who specializes in it. And the reason being is because they understand the nuances of why you might be losing your hair and even the nuances of the medications that can help treat your hair loss and slow it down. So the more that these people have experience in treating your hair loss, the better off that you're going to be. Now you have to be careful here too, because if you go to see someone who specializes specializes in hair loss, and the first thing and only thing they wanna talk about is doing a hair transplant for you, you might be in the wrong place because the real foundation of treating your hair loss is not just a quick hair transplant to move everything to the front and boom, you're set to go. That's not the way to go. That is just a quick Band-Aid on a bad situation. You really need to talk about medical management for hair loss and creating a foundation for helping to slow down your hair loss in order to keep all the hair that you still have. You really want to be in a place where the person that's going to be treating your hair loss is going to sit down with you, take a look at your full scalp, and really take the time to explain why your hair is thinning out 
and really explain the treatments necessary to help you keep the hair that you still have as well as help you get your hairline back to the way that you want it. And so what's the absolute best thing that you can do as soon as you notice that your hair is starting to thin out? You probably guessed what I'm going to say, but it's starting medical management either with finasteride or Rogaine, otherwise known as minoxidil. All of these medications are relatively easy to get a hold of these days. So either if you're getting Rogaine over the counter at your pharmacy or Walmart or wherever you happen to get it, or you're getting finasteride through places like keeps.com or hymns.com, or even through guys like me who manage hair loss all the time it is relatively easy to come across. Now, there are risks associated with taking these medications and there are risks with taking any sort of medication. And we're gonna get into those topics in another video, but the absolute best thing you can do is start some form of medical management to help slow down your hair loss. Notice I said slow down, not stop it, because this is a lifelong process. And your goal is to help slow down your hair loss. Now, definition of the successful use of your medical management, your hair stays exactly where it is, that you maintain the hair where it is now, and you slow down that rate of loss to where it's imperceptible within a few months to a year or so. So if you're on this medical management and two years down the road, you're like, you know what? My hair is still the same exact way that it was two years ago. That's the definition of it actually working. About 65% of guys will see some form of improvement when they're using finasteride because it's blocking the production of the hormone dihydrogen testosterone, which is the actual cause of why your hair is falling out. So if you're blocking the production of that hormone, well then your hair has a chance to rebound and some of the density will come back. Now, you have to use these medications for as long as you care about having your hair. And I hear guys tell me this all the time. Well, what happens if I stop using this? My hair is going to start falling out again. And that's true. It is true because there's no cure for hair loss. These medications are only meant to help you slow down the rate at which it falls out. So that way you can enjoy the hair that you currently have for as long as you care about having your hair. The other thing to remember about these medications is that if you've not treated your hair loss for a number of years, don't expect to get a huge rebound or get all of your hair back when you finally start these medications because that's just not the way it works. These medications are best used for people who are in the early stages or early stages of, of thinning uh, so that they can help keep the hair that they have for a longer period of time. Another thing to remember about these medications is that it takes time to start stabilizing your hair loss. Now, some guys will tell me that they've sat down and they've started using Rogaine for, they use it for maybe a week or two and they stopped using it because they didn't see any difference. Well, that's just not the way that these medications work. Your hair grows for a period of about two years or so, and then it goes to sleep and it goes on a little vacation for about four months. During that four months is when the medication is starting to wake up those hairs that are in the sleeping phase and hopefully help rebound some of that growth that you can see. So it takes about four to six months of using these medications and before you're going to start seeing some form of results. And again, it, these medications are medications that you're going to need to use for as long as you care about having your hair. So first off, once you start noticing that your hair is starting to thin out, the best thing you can do is go see someone who specializes in hair loss and start talking to them about medical management and possibly a hair transplant if that's the route you want to go. And then after that, it's maintaining the medical management so that you get to keep your hair for as long as you care about having your hair. So I hope you guys learned something here today. I'm Dr. Paul Pierce. This is The Plastic Life, and we'll see you again on the next video.